So ultimately, I think that what has to happen is when you're talking about real estate, I think it's important to acknowledge not just that it is one of uh, one of the most massive wealth, one of the most massive and consistent wealth building machines in society. Uh, but second of all, it's it's time for us to stop uh, sort of living in a world where we just believe white people always trick us like those wascally wabbits. They did it again. No, they, they just they just have a different set of values. They have a different way of going about things. Maybe they plant maybe some of them, not all of them. No, no, I'm not putting white folks on a pedestal at all, but they plan, they prepare, they they put they'll they'll go and do the research and put in the work to rehab it and get it ready. And that's a value system, right? That's now again, I'm not again not putting anybody on a pedestal, but the reality is that you tend we tend to be good at the things that matter. We tend to be good at the things that, that we prioritize. So, for example, uh, for some, I know a lot of people where being stylish is, is a high priority. So they look really good. The beard's nicely shaven. They smell good and clothes, clothes are, are real nice and everything, right? Or maybe uh, the priority is to uh, to be able to dance well or to be able to play basketball. I know a lot of people who uh, have kids where the family seems to care more about how well they do on the basketball court than they care about how well they do in the classroom, right? So we end up having these superstar, extraordinary basketball and football players they can do these amazing things because that's extremely important. So I'm not saying that basketball shouldn't be important or that football shouldn't be important and that you can't be stylish. What I am saying is that maybe preserving grandma's house and preserving that family wealth should also be an equally high priority because I, I don't I don't believe that we're just so dumb that we would just sit around and just let people just take our stuff like that. I, and I get it. We, there's racism. There's all these unfair practices. There's so much out there that's unfair. But you can't convince me that that if somebody was really determined to protect grandma's house, they couldn't have pulled it off. You, you, we brag all day about all the all of us fancy Negroes who got college degrees and spent all these years. We, we, we got good jobs, college degrees. We drive in Lincoln Navigators. They advertise those on BET for a reason. So if you can do all of that, why can't you save grandma's house? Why, why can't you? Why, why is it suddenly you fall into the victim box when 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 they come in and they make a plan and they actually st think two steps ahead of you, right? That that should be something that we're embarrassed about. That should be a source of shame. We should say, "Damn, man, we're not mm -mm, that ain't mm -mm, that ain't happening no more. Never again, buddy. Never again." Right? So so the other um piece to that that I was thinking about too. Uh oh, gosh, there was one more point, but I'm not gonna make any more points. I'm gonna I think I, I think I think you get what I'm saying here. So let me just give you some more stats just so we can finish this up. So the average home price in 1980 was $47,200. By the year 2000, that number had risen to $119,600. Again, people were complaining about the prices of homes in, in the year 2000. That was a 150% increase since 1980. And today, the average home price is $416,000, which is a 247% increase over the year 2000. So if you bought a house in the year 2000 and just simply lived and paid your mortgage on time uh, for the last 24 years, you are naturally going to be much wealthier because you bought that $120,000 house and it's now worth half a million. Okay. Uh, and, and then on top of that, uh, if you go over the last 100 years, the, uh, the, the real estate values have grown about 6,825%. So if you did have a family that had enough foresight to preserve property over multiple generations, they've seen a multi-thousand percent increase in their wealth just by sitting on property, sitting on land. And so one of the things that I think that we can gain uh, from our uh, grandparents and great-grandparents who are around before integration uh, is that they understood, I think they understand that it probably was a little bit of a mistake for us to trade in our land and our businesses for corporate jobs and student loans. Uh, land is something you own, that's something you can pass down. Businesses are something you own, something you can pass down.